can't help wondering, is this enough to explain the kindness of humans, or even chimpanzees? The Dutch primatologist Franz de Waal has been a critic of the selfish gene idea. He studies chimps. He believes that our closest living relatives exhibit empathy and moral concern that goes beyond the kin altruism and tit for tat of selfish genes. Let's say there's a big fight, someone loses the fight, very often another one will go over to them, put an arm around them, try to calm them down, uh, groom them. We call that consolation behavior, and actually th that's common enough that you can collect data on it. Duval has accused my work of promoting what he's labeled veneer theory. The idea that morals are a thin veneer on top of the inherent nastiness of our animal nature. Yeah, well, I think um, the reason I speak of veneer theory is because we've seen like 30 years of books published on how humans are not inherently kind, humans are deep down nasty. Uh, and if we are kind, it's only to make a good impression on each other. And if we are moral, it's just a little veneer over human nature. Yes. And I take opposition to that. My feeling is that the, the phenomena that we see, which, which you've described as empathetic, are phenomena which need explaining. Mm -hmm. And we're going to explain them. In, in my case, we're going to explain them in terms of selfish genes. Selfish genes are just as good at explaining altruistic behavior as they are at explaining selfish behavior. But maybe the, the problem is that it, it is certainly a self-promoting gene. And so um, the word selfies has a motivational content, of course. And, and I think that's where people sometimes get confused between if we have selfish genes, that means that we must be selfies. And, that, and those things need to be kept apart. Well, they really yeah. do. I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a very unfortunate um, confusion because yeah. m most of the book is about altruistic behavior. Yeah. You know that in political ideology it has also been used. So for example, what we call social Darwinism, which is very prominent in this country in the US, is a sort of ideological streak which says, well, animals are not nice to each other, we humans should not be nice to each other. There's no reason, for example, yeah. to help the poor, yeah. because the poor need to help themselves. And if, yeah. if they cannot do that, then they perish, and that's fine too. I hate social Darwinism too. But that doesn't mean we should romanticize nature or not face facts when it comes to the genetic roots of altruism. I think altruism has been favored by kin selection in small groups in nature. But when it comes to humans, something special is going on. We've gone beyond kin selection. Our world now has been scaled up. We live amongst large, anonymous populations of strangers, not kin who share our genes, and not people who we might expect to return favors. And yet we still have a lust to be nice. The rule that's built into your brain says, be nice to everyone you meet. Mm -hmm. And that works in nature, because everyone you meet is going to be part of the small group. Similarly, everyone you meet is actually probably going to be a cousin. So when I see a, another human being in distress, weeping or something like that. I have an almost uncontrollable urge to go and console, to maybe, you know, put my arm around them. What's the matter? How can I help? Um, please let me help you. And that's a, a strong inner urge, which as a Darwinian, I believe has ancestral roots in, in a past. When I lived in small groups like this, small bands, in which I was likely to be surrounded by kin or surrounded by individuals who could reciprocate. I no longer am. This person who is weeping is a complete stranger to me. They will never reciprocate. And yet the lust is still there. I can't help it. <laughs> she yes. lost it. She got it last time. <laughs> I got another one. Keep her. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Why are humans often so good to complete strangers? Could it be because our selfish genes are in some sense, a blessed sense, misfiring? Compare it to sexual desire. The lust to copulate, even though we deliberately use contraception to thwart its evolutionary purpose, is still there because of hardwiring from the genes. 
Similarly, we have a lust to be nice, even to total strangers, because niceness has been hardwired into us from the time when we used to live in small groups of close kin and close acquaintances with whom it would pay to reciprocate favors. This, for me, is the antidote to the darkness some have seen in our Darwinian heritage. And it goes further. The joy of being conscious human beings is that we rise above our origins. Our misfiring selfish genes mean we don't ape the nastiness of nature, but extract ourselves from it and live by our values. As Darwin recognized, we humans are the first and only species able to escape the brutal force that created us, natural selection. We civilized men do our utmost to check the process of elimination. We build asylums for the imbecile, the maimed and the sick. We institute poor laws and our medical men exert their utmost skill to save the life of every one to the last moment. This is the 999 Club in London's East End. It takes in the less fortunate, alcoholics, drug addicts and the homeless, providing them with tea and hot meals. Such altruism is, I believe, among the pinnacles of human civilization. We care for the most vulnerable in our society. We look after the sick. We give welfare to the needy. Because I feel, which I've always felt, that they need something hot yeah. to warm them up. You know, when they've been out all night sleeping and they've got no, you know, and they've got no warmth in their bodies, no, you think, if we only have a cup of soup. And what makes you feel the need to be so nice and so good? Well, I was a war child, so we never had a lot of food, and that's why I've always tried to look after these best I can. You know, and I think, well, if they're hungry, I'll, I'll feed so them. So you felt hungry as a child? So yes. you felt, I don't want that to happen to other people? No, that's it. That's yes. how I felt. We can empathise. We can imagine how it is for others. A society run on crude Darwinian lines would be a ruthless, merciless place. Fortunately, natural selection gave us big brains. With those big brains, we can plan a gentler society, the sort of society in which we would want to live. Evolution has no purpose. There's no benevolence there, no forward planning. Some people find that disturbing, but there is a better way to think about it. We, alone on Earth, have evolved to the extraordinary point where we can understand the selfish genes that shaped us. They are not models for how to behave, but the opposite. Because we are conscious of these forces, we can work towards taming them. Through kindness and morality, modern medicine, charity, even paying our taxes, we can overthrow the tyranny of natural selection. Our evolved brains empower us to rebel against our selfish genes. Thank you.